Hi everybody, today we're talking about septal perforation repairs, so the, the repair of a hole inside the nose and the septum. And that's definitely a specialty of mine in addition to rhinoplasty and revision rhinoplasty. I see patients from all over the place that come in with holes in their septum that happen for a variety of reasons. So the, the two most common are cocaine use and prior surgery, a deviated septum surgery or a septoplasty. I've also seen septal perforations that have happened from cauterizing the inside of the nose for nosebleeds, uh, we've seen perforations from nasal spray use, like nasal steroid sprays or afferent use. Uh, picking at the nose can be a cause of perforation. And there's some medical conditions like sarcoidosis or Wegener's granulomatosis that can also result in septal perforations as well. Um, so this is a typical septal perforation. And uh, you can see all the crustiness that happens around the perforation. Patients can get pretty symptomatic where they have trouble breathing through their nose. There's a whistling, bleeding a foul smell in the nose. I've had uh, people tell me that they literally spend 10 minutes every morning just trying to clean out all the, the crusting that develops in their nose overnight. And so this can be a real problem for, for patients. Uh, this illustrates a septal perforation during surgery. So here I've lifted up the two layers of the septum. So think of the septum as a sandwich. So the layer on each side that's the lining of the nose, that's like the bread of the sandwich. And then the inside of the septum is made of bone and cartilage, and that's like the meat of the sandwich. So essentially, when you have a perforation, there's a hole in all three layers. So here I've separated the two uh, pieces of bread, and as you can see, this is about a 10 by 14 millimeter perforation. So almost a half inch front to back, or a little more than a half inch actually, and then almost a half inch top to bottom. So a pretty large perforation. This, this one happened from cauterization. She was having nosebleeds and to stop the bleeding, uh, her EMT had cauterized her septum and that resulted in a, in a perforation that went from one side to the other. Um, so this is how I repair the septum. So I use a PDS plate, which is an absorbable plate, and I use this one. It's the 0.15 millimeter PDS plate. Uh, this is uh, very thin, so it's a fraction of a millimeter in thickness, and it's absorbable. It takes about three to six months for, the, for this plate to dissolve. Um, and uh, this plate basically serves as a scaffold for the repair. So it helps to stabilize the fascia. So fascia is taken from a small incision just above the ear in the scalp. There's the bite muscle called the temporalis muscle. That's if you feel your temple, that's the muscle that bulges with chewing. So there are two layers on top of that, the superficial and the deep layers of the, of the temporalis fascia. So what I do is I take both the superficial and the deep layers of the temporalis fascia and I harvest them as a single piece, usually about three by four centimeters in size, depending on how big a hole I'm trying to patch. And then I trim the PDS plate to the size that I would like. And we want the plate plus the fascia to be larger than the perforation front to back and larger than the perforation top to bottom, so it spans it. And then I make this wafer on the back table that's stitched in place using several chromic, uh, phytochromic sutures, which are dissolving sutures. And then I slide it into the septal perforation. So the great thing about this technique is I don't actually have to close the lining. The lining is very thin and friable, so a lot of the old school techniques of closing septal perforations involve trying to make flaps and trying to rotate the lining from the top, from the bottom, from the front, from the back, even using the, the turbinate to uh, attach the lining of the turbinate to close the perforation. The great thing about this technique is once you slide this repair in, uh, the wafer into the repair, uh, it effectively becomes the new septum. So think of it, going back to my sandwich analogy, it's like taking two pieces of cheese and putting them in the middle so that they then span the perforation and then that cheese becomes the new lining. So effectively that, that heals very quickly. Um, here's a very large perforation that I took care of. This was over two centimeters uh, and, and this perforation was almost too big to close. Actually, we ended up with a 99% closure with a very tiny uh, two millimeter residual perforation at the back of his nose. So I definitely advise patients to get their perforations repaired sooner rather than later because they can get larger and larger with time. Um, as far as recovery goes, so here's, here's that uh, large perforation uh, having been repaired. And I, we place these Doyle stents. These are soft rubber tubes that stay inside the nose for typically a week to 10 days after the perforation. Uh, and then these are removed in the office. The repair can be done through a closed approach, which means you just work through the nostrils or if I'm doing additional procedures like uh, valve repair, a rhinoplasty, a revision rhinoplasty, any of those things, then I'll, I'll open the nose. And especially if it's a large perforation in which the nose has started to cave in or saddle from the outside, then an open approach with rib cartilage is often needed. 
Uh, so feel free to reach out anytime if, uh, if you guys have any questions. Feel free to post any questions in the comments below. And I appreciate you listening to the video. Thanks so much.